Hey guys, hi, how are you? Today I'm gonna share with you five ways in which you can save on your next new vehicle purchase. Stick around because I'll throw you an extra one that is a little bit more abstract and conceptual than anything else, but I feel that it can also help you. Whether you're a first time buyer or a seasoned negotiator, these tips will help you get the best possible deal out there. I have bought 20 vehicles in my lifetime and I wanna believe that out there, there's somebody that can benefit and learn from all the mistakes that I've made buying new cars in the past. <laughs> Tip number one, pay in cash if possible. This is way easier said than done. I mean, in fact, I've never bought a car with cash, a new car with cash, but paying cash is the most straightforward way to save money. As of the making of this video, interest rates on new cars are between five and 7%. And when you compound those rates with the current prices of new vehicles, buying a new car and financing it can take a toll on your personal economy down the road. By avoiding financing, you can save on interest that can add up over time. But in the present day, only about one out of five people buy their new car with cash. If you cannot pay for the full amount in cash, like most of us, consider saving for a larger down payment to reduce your loan amount. Typically, it is advised that if you must finance to put at least 20% down and get a loan that you can pay off in less than four years. The newest data I could find on what Americans are paying for a new car in 2024 says that it is $47,000. So if we stick by the rules that I just mentioned, 20% should be about $9,400 plus sales tax so that you don't end up financing the closing cost of the new vehicle purchase. That is typically sales tax, registration and processing fees. And because those vary from state to state, I'm just not gonna include him. Tip number two, do your research. And I wish that back in the 90s when I started making my car buying mistakes, we had the access to information that we do nowadays because I feel that it's an obligation that before we step into a dealership, we must do our homework. Research the fair market value of the car of our interest and understand which features are must-haves and which ones you can do without. For context, the difference in price between a base 2024 Honda CRV and the top of the line CRV Touring is nearly $11,000. That is over 30% more for the same vehicle that sure has more options, but otherwise serves the same purpose. And I am guilty of this because I tend to be attracted more towards the top of the line version of the vehicles I buy. So I always spend a lot of money on stuff that I could do without. Maybe they're just options that are more bells and whistles than anything else. They're not necessarily features that add any safety or functionality to the car. Tip number three, look for financing deals. Keep an eye out for manufacturer or dealership deals, especially those with low or 0% interest rates. A good credit score can unlock these features for you, so make sure that you know your credit score before you shop. There are many ways to get access to your credit score nowadays, not like back in my day when most of us would just walk in the blind to a dealership without really knowing or actual credit rating. Tip number four, stick to your budget. This is probably the hardest for me. When I started car hunting the last time and I bought that Genesis, I started with a budget of about $40,000 and I ended up buying a car that was nearly $60,000. So it was about almost 30% more that I plan to spend at the time. It is easy to get swayed by shiny features and upgrades, but sticking to your budget is crucial. Like I said earlier, manufacturers dress up their top of the line models with features that you don't really need that may enhance the experience with the vehicle, but they should come at a high premium. Decide on a budget beforehand and resist the temptation to go over it, no matter how appealing these extras might seem. Do you really need things like all-wheel drive or that premium per color? Can you live without that panoramic sunroof or that massive center screen? Sticking to your budget also means finding out the car you really need versus the car you really want. Enough it is that cars depreciate the minute you drive them off the lot. It is worse when you're stuck to a vehicle for which you overspent a type of vehicle that you didn't really need because I often hear friends complaining about the price of gas, which are really high, when they have a long commute to work and they make that drive in gas guzzlers or lifestyle vehicles that do not fit the profile of a commuter car. Also keep in mind the current cost to insure a vehicle. CNBC reports that car insurance has gone up 26% compared to last year. Keep in mind that the car of your dreams may be a nightmare to insure. And if the driver of the car has a bad driving record or maybe it's under 25 or both or even worse, a teenager, 
the cost of insurance will grow exponentially. And because a card that a bank is financing for you must have full coverage, calling your insurance provider for a quote before you fall in love with the test drive may be a smart move that can save you thousands down the road. I remember that the coverage of my Tesla Model Y was 17% higher than the prior SUV that it replaced, which was an RX350 that was basically the same price and within the same segment, yet it was in an EV like with my Tesla. So that was a bit of a surprise to me that could have been avoided by just calling my provider and get a quote before I bought the Tesla, not after. And part of sticking to your budget is knowing the cost of ownership of a vehicle. Bigger tires cost more to replace. A staggered wheel setup may not allow for tires to be rotated, which shortens the life of the tires by a lot. I'll use the example of comparing the cost to replace the tires on my now gone Model Y and my Acura TSX. On the Tesla, it will cost me over 30% more to get new tires versus the Acura, but the tires on the Acura will last me twice as long. And lastly, be willing to walk away. If a deal doesn't feel right or it doesn't meet your expectations or budget, don't be afraid to leave. There will always be better deals out there. The people in the marketing department are great at making us feel like the current deals must be acted upon immediately or we're going to miss out forever. Remember that car dealerships are in for the money, so make them work hard for yours. Walking away is always an option no matter how far you are in the process at the dealership. It takes between four to six hours to drive off the lot with a new car and over $40,000 of debt, so make sure that time counts in your favor. Be willing to say no to markups and dealership install options that are nothing but overpriced items that your car doesn't really need in the first place. And you feel that you scored the best deal ever only to step into the finance manager's office to be offered services and contracts and insurances that can add an additional couple of grand to the transaction. An extended warranty may or may not suit your needs depending on how long you plan to keep that vehicle, but be firm because they will offer you many options. They will usually probably start with an expensive plan and then start going down in price to make you feel like you're getting a great deal. But remember, a great deal on something that you didn't really need in the first place. If a service agreement is not for you, stay firm and say no, no matter how good the deal may seem. Walking into a dealership already knowing the aspects of a new car purchase, such as what is your spending limit, what others are paying for the same car, the best loan rates available, and the true cost to own your next vehicle can make a difference in your vehicle ownership experience. And this is the bonus tip. Do not fall in love with any vehicle or brand for that matter. Before deciding on the car you will purchase, look at the competition and what they're offering. Those of you that follow my channel by now should know that I have no brand loyalty. Sure, I tend to gravitate towards Toyota and Lexus, but I usually look at options from other car manufacturers that offer something similar in price or maybe features just to make sure that there's nothing out there that can be a better deal or a better car for what I need or want at the time when I'm new car hunting. That's exactly what happened when I bought my latest new car, which is the GV70. Uh, I was looking at the RX350. I was about to buy one and last minute, I saw the Genesis, fell in love with it and just went with that one because it was a better deal in so many ways. Not setting your choices in stone will keep you open to the possibility that the car you want may not be the better choice. Car companies are always competing for your money and they will have deals to lure you into their lots. A car redesign usually happens every five to seven years. So a future model may be more expensive just because everybody wants it, but at the same time, it hasn't been sorted out. So normally it will have hiccups that are addressed in later year models. And a great example of this is the Tesla Cybertruck. When it first came out, it peaked at nearly a quarter of a million dollars in auctions. And now they're going for slightly less than $150,000 for one that is barely used. But if you can wait, you can get a new one delivered to you next year for under $100,000. A vehicle model at the end of its life cycle is more likely to come with markdowns and extra options to stay competitive and attractive and can present a better deal for someone that doesn't care that in a few months they'll be overshadowed by the new redesign populating the streets of your city. There you have it, five practical ways to save money on your new vehicle purchase. Remember that the key is preparation and staying firm what you've decided is best for you. Like always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing for more related content. I'll see you next time.